Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Mark Hub. We are going to discuss today, um, just going to go into a meta analysis. What that is, is uh, people who go into the meta, so the internet, right? And just see um, what information there is out there about Jesus, you know, his existence, whether he walked the earth, whether you need, you know, evidence to believe into something. And uh, is that even faith if there's evidence, you know, is that something, you know, you need to believe or is it no longer faith once you have evidence? So stuff like that. But, um, you know, me and Vlad, uh, we're men of faith. We love Jesus, uh, love the Lord. And uh, we're just going to go into it, see what the internet says about Jesus, whether there's archaeological evidence, right, Vlad, or, you know, uh, some kind of writing or whatever we can find and just go deep into it. Well, deep, relatively. Yeah, so I think the the conversation started, or maybe not even conversation, but the thought in my head was, well, it's Christmas. Uh, we're celebrating Jesus's birth, and and this is something that I that I found myself like is questioning myself when I was younger. I was like, was Jesus actually real, or is it just only in the Bible? You know, right? Because a lot of times uh, there is a lot of things in the Bible that we look at and we're like, this is definitely like a met- metaphor, or maybe we're not sure if it's real or not. As miracles and things, uh, resurrection, like, did it actually happen? So I think we we don't want to go too far into it. And I think the most basic question that we can ask ourselves was Jesus actually, um, did, did he actually uh, walk the earth? Because we believe he was 100% man and God. So we're going to figure out the man part today and just kind of see what the internet says. It's just like a basic, basic understanding of, like, did Jesus actually live? Or was it all just the biblical stories of like of the apostles that they just made it up, right? Right. Yeah. And we're not like, you know, archaeologists. We're not scholars in history or anything. We're just regular people like you, you know, and uh, we're just wanting to see what's out there, you know? Well, Daniel, Genuinely have you, curious. Have you thought about this before? Have you done your research or? So, I mean, I've done like some research for myself right i just i love history in general as you know a student going through high school uh history was one of those classes that was just like you know it just came to me and i believe if we don't learn from history we're bound to repeat the same mistakes um so uh yeah you know one of the big ones um that i i just kind of like wanted to know is you know People say Jesus, well, not people. The Bible says Jesus went through everything, right? He went through everything. So if somebody went through everything in life, it's interesting to know how they navigated those situations, right? And just where those situations are and stuff like that. One of my first Bibles my dad ever gave me to, uh, gave me was a Bible with illustrations of histor- uh, historical type of like places and kind of like references to explain why certain things were so important or contextually why this is such a big um Mm -hmm. idea or item of significance within the story right like a olive branch why was it an olive branch for example right uh why golgotha why this and all this kind of stuff is very relevant very um important in the overall theme of the story of Jesus, you know, his coming and stuff. So, yeah. Got it. I I got it, I think. <laughs> you think well, you got it. Anyway, I was I was curious myself uh, a few years ago, so I wanted to see. I don't think I was, when I was in my teens or maybe even early 20s, I didn't really, I just, like, research. I just kind of thought he lived or not. He lived, and I'm just like, okay, I'll just, we'll just kind of believe in it. But, uh, at some point, I'm like, did he actually live? So why don't we just uh, dive in? Um, yeah, see what I'm we gonna can find. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And first of all, I think one of the first things you you go into, like, history.com, and they say, archaeological evidence of Jesus does not exist. 
And we can right. leave it at that. We're like, so that's it. Jesus doesn't exist. That's it, bro. History uh, Channel said it. It must be real. <laughs> yeah, history.com. That's it. Um, yeah, let's close this topic. <laughs> no, just kidding. So I actually <laughs> was Googling this one, you know, um, and uh, if you go down more, I think there's going to be like this uh, Jewish man, scholar, um, or writer. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but he wrote the book, The Jewish Antiques, I think it's pronounced. And it's basically like the history of um, the Israeli people, the mm -hmm. Jewish, you know, culture, all that kind of stuff. And it mentions how, uh, like one of the first writings, I think, if I'm correctly citing it, how Jesus was unjustly crucified, right? And if you don't know about Jesus at all and you're just listening to this, um, Jesus was actually convicted of basically trying to overthrow the government, all this kind of stuff, all these false accusations by Pharisees, which is like these um, teachers of the law um, and in Judaism. And uh, basically, you know, they had him crucified and yep. so people um there's accounts that people thought back then were I, i'm guessing they were passed down because it was like a couple uh years that that book from the death of jesus that it was written and stuff and i think it was like a compilation of 90 years i think or something of uh jewish um you know history of stuff that they found well yeah so let's i think let's just okay we skip the history and then kind of the, the things that you're talking about we can start diving in into wikipedia very just basic um so jesus is a lot of people say and scholars accept that jesus was a historical figure so scientifically scholarly uh, a lot of people agree that jesus was a real person the the problem that kind of what we talked about earlier is that we don't know if the miracles um were real per se like scholarly uh, pr uh proved to be real right because a lot of it was just like small scale a couple people um actually one of the events that was repeated and i think all of the gospels was the feeding of five thousand with the fishes and bread i think that was the only miracle that was like um written down by multiple or actually by all of the apostles but the rest of them were just like instances and it even says in the bible somewhere that like if if we start writing every miracle it wouldn't even fit in the book right so uh we're not gonna go and just try to prove every miracle was uh real because that is when our faith kind of have to kick in if we, and if we believe that jesus was real and we know he was real um, just by even glancing on Wikipedia, then we can kind of start moving our way and start introducing ourselves. Okay, so if Jesus was real, what was real about Jesus, um, right? So that's kind of like step number one, I would say. Yeah, no, for sure. The evidence of Jesus. What is what is some of that juiciness? Yeah, and a lot of it is just like, from, from what we've seen, obviously there is Christian sources and these are the apostles and some other people were writing about. But then also the ones that you were talking about, Daniel, is that there were other writers, um, especially in Rome, right? They were writing down things and they were trying to figure out what's going on with these Jews, why they're all fighting all the time. <laughs> and it um, looks like there's a, quite a lot of evidence of this person jesus who was going against um kind of like the the old school the old the old school church per se yeah the the pharisees way of living that's like more of a accurate i think description because he, he definitely had it out for them <laughs> yeah. i mean somebody looking outwardly in uh would say so you know um, but no, he really loved everybody. Uh, he all, he all meant it for the good. And I, I guess just to elaborate why it's important that there's both sources, 
uh, that are not just from, you know, so to say, his homeboys, uh, the apostles, uh, but people who were uh, non-biased, so to say, mm -hmm. and out, outside sources, because that's how, you know, you can... Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why I kind of want to dive into um, even the Wikipedia, because, yeah, we can we can obviously, you know, if you believe in the Bible and you say, yeah, 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 of course, uh, you know, the apostles, everything was they they were correct and all that. But um, the question is here, like, is there anything outside of that? Um, so. Uh, give me a second. We're just going to adjust the camera real quick. There it is. Hmm. You're pretty much frozen right now. I'm not sure why it's that. Okay. Let me reload you. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to uh, have you as a static. You're just going to be stuck in one uh, in one base. OK, so anyway, I mean, just like this, we can already see, OK, Jesus was real. Now, the question is, do you believe in a lot of things the Bible talks about? Um, not well, we can kind of dive into it, too, because what we know as like okay let, let, let's talk about resurrection like can, in, in, in all possible way can we believe that resurrection is real yeah maybe we've seen some people come to life uh is it is it possible that a person was dead for a couple of days and come back to life i don't think there's like a medical or actual evidence of it but from from what i researched and from what we've seen and a lot of historians actually agree on it is that the fact that the disciples uh they just they were so dedicated and they went so far ahead to spread the message of jesus that a lot of people and scholars just agree that nobody who would who would fake this and don't truly believe in the cause would actually go as far as the disciples went because pretty much all of them died for the message and mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh 
I, I think if we don't really look look or for it, we won't find it because we don't really see it every day. Uh, it's not really something that like just pops off in the news. So I think it definitely uh, makes sense to research. And then right now I'm reading through like Wikipedia and uh, this guy, uh, there's a scholar says John P. Mayer views the crucifixion of Jesus as historical fact that states Christians would not have invented a painful death of their leader, invoking the criteria criterion of embarrassment principle in historic research. Right. So that's kind of the the counterintuitiveness of Jesus and compared to other religions is that this person who was God, um, yeah, came down, uh, laid their life down and we are supposed to believe in this died for us, right? Resurrected, gave us new hope. And, um, we don't see that in other religions. Uh, we don't see it anywhere. And I think that that is correct. Like that would be pretty embarrassing and maybe it is. And that's the whole, I think that's the whole, the, the whole idea of the kingdom and the gospel is that it's upside down. It's, uh, the people who lay down their own lives, uh, are the ones who will be the greatest in the kingdom and, you know, uh, in the faith. Exactly. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah, what the the cross is at? Yep. Yeah, and I think there is no definite uh, answer for it uh, that resurrection happened. And I think there's a lot of evidence that it could happen. There's also a lot of things you can say that are probably, oh, we're not sure 100%. And that is, again, believing in something like that, that is, that does take faith, uh, that does take a little bit of research. Um, there's definitely a evidence. If you start digging really deep, there's evidence that it could have happened. Although we don't know because there were a lot of people calling themselves messiahs and Jesus and, and you know, the people wanted to take the glory, uh, for what Jesus is doing, for what God is doing. So there is going to be a lot of uh, historical uh, evidence, and maybe some of it might not be true, and some of it um, we, we don't know. But the bottom line is we know what happened. We know it probably happened, and if you believe in it, then you will receive that, right? And it's kind of what you were saying earlier. The reason why we see people of faith receive resurrections and maybe healings and all that because they believe in it. And there's something that we don't understand about that. So many different examples, even with the denominations that we don't, uh, not everybody agrees with, but we know bottom line, even if you're not unchristian, if you believe into something, if you say or proclaim something, it will happen. So we know that's just like a truth on a very base human level. Um, well, another thing I wanted to touch on, which I found quite interesting, is the evidence of Jesus from the Old Testament. Um, when I start researching, I mean, one of the first, uh, for one of the first things in the Bible and the Genesis you read, I think the, it was prof Jesus was prophesied like, uh, first few chapters. Uh, if you remember, it's like, he will sting your, your heel or something like that. When God was talking about, um, to the snake, um, I'll, I'll have to pull it up, but uh, it was already like there. And a lot of people say, yeah, it's about Jesus. And I pulled up this uh, website it says five fifty-five Old Testament prophecies about Jesus. 
which a lot of them, and actually, if you if you look at the evidence and some of the numbers actually line up in terms of the age, like in terms of lineage, obviously from David, David's lineage, then we're looking at how many years it would take, uh, especially some of the prophecies from the book of Daniel. And it all kind of, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Yeah. For sure. And yeah, that's that's definitely interesting. A lot of times it takes faith not to believe, right? Um, so maybe atheists are people of faith too. They just uh, just to believe in other things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for sure, and it, it is pretty interesting. And I did a... Um, a couple of years ago, I did like this breakdown of even, um, you know, that the passage of of, P, of Jews getting freed from Egypt and how, yeah, the exile and how how the blood like the whole thing of like the blood of the lamb upon the like the uh, the the doors and all of that. And there's like so much parallel. I have it all written down. But if you start reading like chapter to chapter and you start comparing it, that whole uh, idea of uh, angels coming like, coming down, protecting people, it, it, all, it all like leads to Jesus because it's exactly exactly what it talks about. It's such a cool parallel. And it would be interesting to pull up maybe some other time. But something to look into if you look into uh, if you look into those passages from uh, you know, from when Moses was telling Jews what to do in order to protect themselves from the from the angel of death, I think, or maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't read I haven't read it in a while. But if you read it, it's like exact por uh, portray of like how Jesus came and saved us from death. It's super interesting, and I think any everybody should just research it for themselves. Yeah. 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 Well, and you know, in terms of even the Old Testament, like we can say, okay, I I get it. New Testament, like it's it, it happened recently. Um maybe we can have some evidence here and there, but Old Testament is like, a lot of those are just like fantasy stories, like you said. The cool part about it is, and that's what I was kind of mentioning to you earlier, is the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, which were discovered like, um, like around 50 years ago or 60 years ago. 
uh, between 1946 and 1956 perfectly like stowed away into in in like this uh it was like a cave or something like that uh next to dead sea and you start seeing that a lot of the the passages from the torah uh from the old testament is very much confirmed by these and these happen to to uh these are 40 percent copies text from hebrew scriptures so it, it basically uh, what it does is justifies and says, okay, these are actual real scriptures that people wrote. And they probably happened too because there is a lot of the a lot of the lineage and, and numbers and all these things. And um, a lot of them even outside of the Bible that confirms the biblical events. And we know that even from, uh, from other books um, and other religions, we even know and Muslims, right? They believe that Jesus lived and and they uphold him to a high standard. So we know that as well. So it's pretty interesting to see that we found like really, um, really convincing evidence of a lot of these texts that it wasn't maybe even exactly a just a, a thing that someone made a couple hundred years ago or like the uh, Catholic Church has decided to create all these stories or whatever. Uh, a lot of these go back into thousands of years before um, saved, somehow stowed away, and actually confirming that a lot of these stories are dated correctly and that we're actually real. So that's one of the, for me personally, a lot of the big evidence is of Jesus' deity is also that we have these texts that talk about Jesus, prophesy about Jesus. They're correct and also confirmed to be historically accurate. Yep. Yeah, and I think, I, th yeah, exactly. And I think it has to go, to me personally, it goes along with um, love, which is a lot of times is sacrifice. And what do we know about sacrifice is that you sacrifice something um, in order to receive, maybe, we don't know, maybe to receive something in, uh, in the future or not. We don't know. But the, the point is you give something away you believe into some that something's going to happen and uh m maybe receive or not that doesn't matter the fact is you're you're consciously committing that committing that act of sacrifice act of faith you're believing and uh, ultimately makes you a better person we know that 
We know we know that a sacrifice makes you a better person. We know that um, you know putting something away and waiting for it makes you a better person. We know that believing in something good makes you a better person. And we know there's a lot of studies too where you know why positive people um, just get more things done. Uh, you know we. We know that if I'm sad, if I'm depressed, I don't want to do things. I, I don't I don't feel motivated. I don't want to get things done. And something that, you know, I know, Daniel, you want to talk about maybe uh, in the next episodes uh, about mental health and, and all other things. And once you're in that state, you don't want to do uh, because you don't believe in anything. You don't believe anything going to come out of it. You don't have anything positive to look for. And a lot of times it, it is it prevents us. So. To me, it's like whether you believe in Jesus or not, whether uh, whether resurrection was historically proven or not, the 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 bottom line is there is always is always uh, it's always good to believe at least for yourself and know what you believe in and it, knowing that the fact that Jesus lived and He was here that's already evidence for one thing, uh, and if you get to a second one, whether you believe Him, He was God or not. And how far do you want to believe what miracles he done? Can we do these miracles nowadays? That is totally up to you. But that's something that we challenge you is like uh, there, there is no limit to it. Twitter, yep. Yeah, sorry, Daniel, we couldn't get your camera to work halfway, but uh, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear your voice. That's all that matters. We can't see you, but we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. Mm -hmm. mm, come on. All right, guys. Thank you. Also, thank you, everybody. If you're watching us on Twitch, kudos to you. Um, hope to catch you next time. All right, guys. Take care.